Welcome back, everybody, to By Faith Bible Studies. So today what we're talking about is how I have personally changed my view on how to do apologetics. You may or may not remember that a while back, maybe a year, over a year and a half, possibly two, I don't know, when we first started the Romans series, I was very passionate at that time about Romans 1 and I titled one video from Romans 1, We're Doing Apologetics Wrong! Exclamation point. So that was supposed to be like a shocking title. No, barely anyone watched it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I had at that time a different view of how to do apologetics. And if you don't know what apologetics is, it's basically defending the faith, giving a defense for what you believe it's based off of first peter three fifteen, always being ready to give a defense or giving a reason for the hope that is in you uh, apologia is the uh greek word but um what i what i want to do is explain how i have changed my view on apologetics and how i think it could be helpful just to have a more I, th I think rational view of it, uh, personally more biblical view, uh, and yeah, so let's start on my journey of apologetics, so, uh, and this has been personal to me in my own faith uh, for a while, but if we go back before I was saved, uh, believe it or not, not, I wanted to write a Christian book, and I wanted to title it The Christian Life, and just basically lay out everything I knew about the Christian life. So I started with a defense about why God exists and why the Bible's true. I started that out as an unbeliever. I was just was uh, grown up and uh, ta taught that my entire life. Uh, I, I grew up just believing it was true. But that was the first time I really examined for myself, is this whole thing true? How do I make a defense? And I, and I obviously, everyone has presuppositions. You presuppose things. And I presuppose that it was true because I was taught that my entire life and I've always presupposed it was true. But then I really got into why do I believe what I believe. Uh, and eventually, like, I got 30 pages into that book and I just shut it down. I deleted it because it was very, very dumb and stupid because the arguments I was making made no sense. I was reading it through. I was just like... No one's really going to be convinced ever about this. Uh, so, and that was just me, just in my very early stages of thinking about Christianity. I got interested, and I wanted to make sure that the faith that I professed to be true uh, was actually true. Um, so I wrestled with that, but uh, my whole life, always believing it was true. Then, right as I got saved, maybe a couple weeks after... Someone sent me a video by Cy Ten Brudengate, and he's, I think he's Dutch or Polish or one of those, <laughs> and he's an uh, apologist, but he's a presuppositional apologist, which means that he t comes from the standpoint when defending the faith that we presuppose as Christians that the Bible's true and that people who don't believe in God or don't believe the Bible is true, they are suppressing the truth and unrighteousness and they have their own presuppositions that it's wrong. So you go at it from that and you show them that they're being irrational for thinking that the Bible uh, isn't true or that God doesn't exist because you presuppose that they already know that he exists based on Romans 1 where it says uh, for uh, verse 19 in Romans 1, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, main, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. And that's true, 100% true. But taking that and saying, since people know that God already exists and they're just suppressing the truth in unrighteousness, you basically shove it down their throats that Ah, uh, you know that is true. You know it. You know it, basically, uh, and showing them that there is no truth without God, and and that that's 
Again, true. But I don't think it's the best way to do it. And what caused me to really shift and be scared of showing evidence is because he laid out this idea. And this was all very new to me. And I thought it was so cool listening to this guy, uh, Cy Tim Brudengay. And I was just like, whoa, this is this is amazing. This is how I'm going to do apologetics. And this is now I, I was saved. And he was uh, explaining uh, how if we just lay evidence at the feet of unbelievers, just this is why the evidence why I believe Christianity is true. Then what that does is it makes them the judge and not God. And from an evidentialist perspective, which I believe is also not the best way to do apologetics, evidential apologetics, uh, it what what it, what it does is it does make the unbeliever the judge. So I was scared of evidence. I ran away from evidence. And I was all presupposition. We presuppose that they already know that God exists. But now, as I'm working through that, and I'm actually doing, starting to do evangelism, I'm getting people asking me, why do you believe the Bible is true? And I say, well, I believe the Bible is true because God wrote it. And they're like, how do you know that God exists? And I said, well, I know that God exists because the Bible, Bible tells me so, and that uh, may, makes people laugh and scoff at your faith. Uh, so that that made me start to rethink. Okay, wh- where am I going wrong here? And obviously, being a teenager and someone who watches too much YouTube, you go down YouTube rabbit trails of atheists and people attacking your faith and you want to be able to counter every single little argument about their yeah you try to counter it and it just doesn't work so very early on i had an answer to the problem of evil problem of evil is simple god takes responsibility for why there is evil and sin in the world because he ordained for evil and sin to take place so when people say how could a loving god do xyz to my family or whatever well god preordained that 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 one's simple and you work through that and that's a very 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 common atheistic view um and it is again it is true that everyone by looking at the creation everyone knows that god exists you know it intuitively but as i continue to move into what my view is now i'd call it Classical apologetics was just kind of in the middle with a hint of presuppositional uh, apologetics. So you keep in the back of your mind the reason why people won't believe. Because you can present, I believe that we can present the most airtight, best case for God being real and the Bible being true. That That, that is irrefutable. It truly is. Uh, we, we can rationally do that. It's the most rational thing we could do um because it's true uh and scientifically it's true historically it's true it's all true so you can make a rational case for christianity but keep in the back of your mind how i view apologetics now is that no they won't accept this because they are suppressing the truth in unrighteousness that is what you keep in the back of your mind and, and you, you can explain hey the reason why you don't believe in God is not because you have a lack of evidence. It's because of your hardness of heart. So I think when we lay forth evidence at their feet, we're not saying, <coughs> hey, you be the judge if, this, if you think it's true. Believe it or not. Uh, I don't think that's the best approach. That's more evidential. I think now what we do is we, we can give a reason. This is why I believe the Bible is true. First, God is revealed in the Holy Spirit, and that's that's what really is why I believe the Bible is true. He has to open up your heart, or else you'll forever be a skeptic and forever be an unbeliever, if, unless God makes you alive, because you're dead in your trespasses and sins as an unbeliever. Um, but you really have to, I think, 
just show them this is why 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 Christianity is true. I, I'm not just when when I say I believe by faith. I have faith in Jesus. It's not just this blind faith walking in the dark. Oh, I hope that this exists. No, it is 100 percent true, and you can just show it plainly. This is the most rational explanation for everything in the universe. And it's 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 true. You can make that case, and apologists all over have made that case, and it's wonderful, and it strengthens Christians' faith. So that, that's where I've landed now. But as I've started uh, getting into, uh, I'm at the Masters University, always a Mustang, by the way, uh, <laughs> um, my teachers have explained, as I'm getting into the Bible and the background for books of the Bible, um, They've explained what unbelievers say about the Bible and the authorship. And I, th- I do think the Bible is the best apologetic itself because you can just quote scripture and show that scripture is perfect and all that. I think that that's wonderful. But when people go behind the curtain and they say that Moses didn't write the Pentateuch and... Joshua didn't write Joshua. Um, We don't know who wrote Judges, Samuel, Kings, all the way down. Uh, Daniel didn't write Daniel. Isaiah didn't write Isaiah. It's all just this fabrication of people during the Babylonian exile uh, who put this all together and basically fabricated uh, and wrote, wrote down what they believe to be true, but... Uh, the authors that we think that are true today aren't true. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John did not write Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Paul didn't write six of his epistles. Six of them are not written by Paul, and so on. Uh, and going behind and saying that the Bible is really, it's just pure lies. That, that, that's what unbelievers do. And there, there have been higher scholarship for a very long time saying this is why the Bible isn't true. It's because if you go behind the curtain, it appears, oh, Moses wrote the first five books and that's the foundational and then everything's built off of that and we have all of history basically recorded. But if you go behind, it's all just it's all just nonsense. And that's not true. I just want to say that. Rationally, that is not true. Factually, that is not true. But I've been attacked with that while being at school and studying that. And, and my teachers are, they give great... Uh, reasons for why that's not true. Uh, I'm not. I'm not being attacked by my teachers. But what I'm saying is that is what I've been thinking about now. And now, I realize, yes, the authors, whoever wrote the books, the, the authors that they claim to be. But the Bible is 100% infallible, inerrant. If you just read it, you'll notice that. But. Uh, <laughs> That, that all to say, the average person that you're witnessing to on the street is not going to say, well, you know, the reason why I just can't trust the Bible is because Daniel uh, was written at 165 AD and not 586 that it was claimed to be written as. Um, it's not actually prophecy in that book. It's just written to look like prophecy. Isaiah did not write Isaiah. Uh, Moses didn't write the Pentateuch, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and those attacks against Scripture, uh, you're not going to get that. So as a Christian, there are answers if you do struggle with stuff like that. But that all to say, I don't think you need to know that. You're not going to get that. Because apologetics, what is it for? It's to give a reason for the hope that you have. The reason you have hope is because of the Holy Spirit. And the reason you have hope is because God has promised it in His Word. So... You don't have to worry. God's word is truthful. It's perfect. It's inerrant. And apologetics is supposed to support evangelism. Be a weapon in evangelism, in in your tool belt. But it is not the gospel. It is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that is how my mind has been changed and my position has changed about apologetics. I love apologetics because it proves that what I believe is so true. But just remember, it's not the gospel and it's really not even uh, that important to know every nuance of apologetics because God's word is trustworthy no matter what. 
whether we think it is or not. As Romans 3 says, let God be true and every man a liar. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.